Welcome back to Families in Action on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. I'm Kerry Question. I'm your host. Jerry Bruce is here co-hosting today, and we're doing a show on, hey, things we're thankful for, huh? And gratitude. Wasn't that neat? The callers we just had, Spencer and Kelly. Just great. Uh, they, you know, they sound grateful. You know? They do. They sound wonderful. And, and um, hey, you can't beat that. But we have other callers in. So let's bring, why don't we bring Alex on the phone? Alex, are you with us? Hi. Hi, Alex. You're on the you're on the air with 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 Jerry and I. What's going on? Um, nothing. I have 42 days today. Oh, oh! I know who you are. Very good. Tell us about it. <laughs> um. Well, somebody saw something in me and um helped me out and. If it wasn't for you, I'd probably be back on the streets right now. And it was a miracle that I had my baby clean and healthy because nobody thought that was going to happen. And tomorrow I go to court for uh, my son. And as of right now, the social worker is going to give me a chance. So that's you know I actually spoke to the social worker last week and and you weren't gonna get a chance but but you being as determined as you are and, and because of that determination you sold me and and you sold Sergeant Bob and 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 the social worker now everybody's behind you. Yeah, I know. I'm getting five cases dropped. I know. And my family actually wants to be around me. My my real dad, my brothers, like things are falling into place and I never thought I was going to be okay with being sober and today I'm grateful that like God's leading me back to life again. I never thought I was going to feel like this. You know, this is a, a, a I want to have you on the on, on a radio show and just do a whole thing about what, what, what happened with you but um, I'll share a little bit Alex was in our residentials a couple of times and didn't stay uh, you got pregnant do you mind if I go any further with this no not at all you were eight months plus pregnant and um, you can go from there you were strung out I'll let you I'll let you do the rest yeah I was out on the streets still using and using what I could, using heroin okay in crystal and I couldn't stop and I didn't think I was going to be able to and then um, I had Sergeant Bob come and offer me help and I really wanted it but I didn't know how to stop and I didn't think I could so I finally got myself to the hospital where they medically detoxed me and I agreed to go and be a Jew which I had no idea what I was agreeing to and then sure enough I see you there the next day and I kept bugging you to come back to the house even though I left every time I was here and when I had my son I don't I really don't know what it changed but like I wasn't obsessing anymore and I was starting to put other things before my wants and needs and you offering me here really felt like my last chance at trying to get this and I really never thought I was going to ever feel like this. I never thought I was going to be able to feel content with being sober and dealing with life on life's terms and I don't know what it was this time that clicked but I get the word acceptance and gratitude and willingness I get that I totally get that now and, and just for the for the listeners I mean what a, what a story uh, Alex was eight and a half months pregnant strung out on heroin we actually detoxed her and the baby and he's perfectly healthy and he's doing great and and, and Alex was in the hospital on a behavioral health unit and then ended up in the medical hospital where she was with her baby for a couple of days and children's services actually came and took the baby and, and it's in another home right now safe and happy waiting for Alex to get better yeah and so is my daughter and now my daughter won't have two dead parents what does that mean well her dad passing away from this stuff last year an overdose yeah yeah so now you know i'm learning how to be a mom a sister a friend a daughter again and honestly like i couldn't have done it without you and all the support i have right now like 
and I'm learning healthy boundaries and meeting new friends that aren't going to jeopardize my recovery and I'm not nitpicking what I want to do. I'm going to do everything I need to do this time. Wow, I can't even tell you how proud I am of you. And, and you know what? I remember when Sergeant Bob called and it, the amount of people that were involved in pulling you off the streets and, and sobering you up and, and giving you and that baby a chance. It's, it's incredible. Boy, I'd be sure. Wow. It makes my Thanksgiving happy just by thinking. Yeah, it means a lot to me, Carrie. Because this is my first Thanksgiving. I'm going to get to be with my family and they actually want me around. And my mom posted on Facebook, like, a picture of me and how proud she is of me. And I never thought that she would do that. And I had my old friends calling and asking how I was doing. I mean, like, my old friends that are sober and clean, not part of this lifestyle. And people are so proud of me. And it just felt really good to know that my mom was, like, boasting about me because usually she would be embarrassed. And today she's like proud of me. She doesn't worry when I call her. She knows I'm okay. And it just feels good to have all the support that I do. And I couldn't have done it without you guys. I don't think anyone anywhere should ever, should be at all embarrassed about you. Everyone everywhere should be very proud of who you are and what you're doing and the great young lady you're turning into. You know what? I love you lots. And, and just keep on, keep, keep on trucking. Anything else you want to say to anybody, Alex, before I terminate um, you no i just want to say thank you very much i really couldn't have done this without you sergeant bob everyone here at action and most of all my mom yeah well your mom's probably listening what do you want to say to her um that i love her and that i think she's an amazing strong woman and never giving up on me so thank you very much carrie i love you i love you too and don't you ever give up on yourself yeah. Okay. I'm giving myself a chance now. You got it, Alex. So we're gonna hang up. Love you lots. You have All a right. great holiday. And let's bring on Morgan. Morgan. Hello. Hey Jerry, it's Hi. Morgan. Hi Morgan. Hi Carrie. Hi Jerry. <laughs> hey Morgan. Hey, you have some history with Morgan, don't you? Since she was 14 years old. Well, what's that? 15. Let me hear the history. Uh, she was brought to us at the residential in uh, Santa Paula. Uh, yes. And heroin addiction at that point, I would say. At 15 years old, okay. Uh, went to Simi Valley. May have come back to the farm or the ranch. I can't remember. Yeah, the ranch. But she has been pretty much to every location we have i think you know for residential <laughs> and, <laughs> so we'll let you go out from and, there but her journey you know is her journey and you know as currently that i know she is doing well well let's find out hey morgan tell us about hello her. we have no idea tell us well yes um when i was 15 actually back in 2007 um this time exactly i was um back in santa paula at the farm and um it was an experience that actually taught me what gratitude was and um you know i was very stubborn i kept trying to stay sober trying to stay clean um i kept going back to action because there they had faith in me and i didn't have any faith in myself and um, my family was like, go back to action, just go back to action, because my family had faith in me as well, and they knew that I can do it, and I know that, you know, like, they saw potential in me, and so did action, and they were always so loving, and, you know, it's like, that's my second home, <laughs> so it's like, I mean, I was always on the streets, if I, like, the past probably four years, I've been on the streets, Um this past run, um, well, I stopped doing heroin in 2013. I actually beat that addiction, and um, I went through my last. I went through my last withdrawal through action. I had um, I had overdosed in their office back in Peru, mm -hmm. and they brought me to the hospital. I remember that. And yes, and I had gotten through that. She came, you came for you came for an intake, and you were be and you were overdosing. You were dying. Ye Yep. And um, I actually flatlined earlier in that year on Ju um, 
January 31st, and that was my closest near-death experience. Um, I was out for um, 12 minutes total. Right. Because it took um, it took quite a while to get to the hospital, and my ex boyfriend, who now passed away, um, he had carried me into the hospital, and um, he yeah he saved my life, but um, that hospital saved my life more so, and then after that he, I was he saved overdosed. he saved your life but lost his he saved my life but lost his yeah exactly so it's like he's one of my angels now. But he, luckily, he didn't lose his life through um, an overdose. Right. But he was probably like I don't. I think he was sober when he died. He got hit by a car. But that's you know that's what happens. Yeah. But um, uh, this just recently happened a month ago. Mm -hmm. So I'm going through that, and you know what? Through being in recovery, I'm able to be stronger about death, and I'm able to fight through it. It's hard though. It's really hard. But um, I've known, I've lost a lot of people who have died from heroin overdoses. Um, but this past time, my past experience has been just purely meth since 2013. And I, um, five months ago, I've, I'm coming up on five months clean. Hey. And I know, right? Oh, cool. <laughs> I'm so yeah. happy. Look, well, you should but, see the smile on Jerry's face. <laughs> she's really clean. <laughs> yeah, she Absolutely. is. And she sounds it, don't she? Yes. Yeah. I was 80 pounds five months ago. I was yep. dealing with anorexia and, um, and meth addiction at the same time. If I wasn't high, if I wasn't high, I wasn't eating. And so it was kind of like twisted where like if I was high, I was able to eat. But um, I didn't like myself. I was living in a tent. I didn't know how to shower. Um, I didn't know how to do anything. Um, I wasn't going in public. I wasn't talking to my family. I wasn't speaking to anyone for that matter. I, my whole reality was twisted. I thought I was living in hell. I didn't know what was going you, on. You and were. Yeah, I really was. And the only thing that I was thinking about was I want to get sober. I want to get sober. And I kept telling my boyfriend at the time that I wanted to get sober. And I would throw the pipe at him. And I'd be like, I don't want to do this anymore. Because it's like the, what they say is if you have a head full of recovery, the using is it's all shifted. It's just different. So I, um, I ended up going to jail. I purposely got myself arrested, and um, when I went into jail, um, it took me a good probably two months to finally come down and <laughs> and come back to reality. Um, I went into a different rehab, which is prototypes, and um, I did not want to go there. I was wanting to go to action, actually, <laughs> and I was like, send me to action. I think I actually tried to get my sentencing specialist to send me there. But, like, they wanted me to go to prototypes instead. But, like, I had them give you the phone number and stuff. I'm like, I have insurance. <laughs> I was like, send me there. But um, they wanted me to do a longer program. Mm -hmm. and um, which, which, you, which you needed. All yeah, women. It was an all women's program, yeah, too. That's right. Yes, it was an all women's program. That's what they wanted me to do. And, um... And I ended up getting out of there. And now I'm at a sober living in Ventura. I'm currently sitting out front of the GCRC meeting. And this is my own little meeting outside of the meeting, <laughs> but which I don't suggest. But this is different, so it's okay. Um, and... Uh, you have a job. I, I love... Yes, I have a job. I work at Forever 21, and I love it. And I haven't had a job in forever. And it feels good being sober working because when I was working before, I was loaded. And it's so, like, it's so good having a clear head and being um, held accountable for. And it's just, it's amazing. The feelings that you get, like, I've, I am grateful for feelings today because I wasn't feeling a damn thing before. And now I can actually feel, even if I hate the feelings, I, they're real. I just, yes. Yeah, they're real. It's like everything is so real now. And I just, I love it. I love life today. From, and from, I from, mean, from Tent City to this. In five yes. Years. Check her out. Exactly. And, and it's she's like, done the work. Yeah. yeah, I worked steps today. I'm on, well, I'm only on step two, but I only, I am not only have five months, but I have five months. That's right. You, you know? do. Yeah, and it's like I've come so far, and 
like having so many years behind me teaching me about recovery is like helping me where I am today. And you know what, Jerry? That's I love what she just said because that's what I say to people all the time. It says, what if it don't work? All we can really do is what? Plant the seeds, right? And, and it will eventually yes. grow. And the garden will grow when it needs to. That's the way it works. So and watering it is them, you know, doing a recovery program, doing the you know a twelve step program, you know, getting therapy, you know, working on themselves, and you know, it does you know bloom to well, look, you know, the there person it is. is. Yeah. Look at look at Morgan. So hey, what are you what are you grateful for, and and anything you want to say to anybody before we let you off? The I hook? am grateful for life today. That's what I'm grateful for and awesome. everything that comes along with it. And if anyone is losing hope or anyone doesn't have hope, just have faith in yourself and know that you're worth it. Hey, Morgan, I can't, yes. I can't tell you how proud we are of you. Thank you. <laughs> and how much we love you. You keep it up. Thank you. I love you guys, too. And I'm gonna, I want to bring you and, and all the other people that are calling. I want to bring you all on this show in the next few weeks. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. I want to... I I I really get down to it here so thanks for calling you have a great holiday and we love you love you Morgan. Okay, love you too love yeah. you bye so we still have callers right so let's bring on dan dan you're on families in action <laughs> hello everybody hello Hi, there <laughs> so, so tell us about you and and where you are and what you're calling about and all that good stuff uh well right now i'm at uh action family counseling um, I'm actually at the center. Um, it's the first time that I've ever um, been in any kind of rehab facility. Um, I started drinking and doing hard drugs when I was 14. I'm, I'm 33 now, and it's 19 years of heroin and alcohol and, and just anything I could put in my body. And I've been here for almost a week so i've been sober for six days and it's been the longest i've been sober in my entire life um for as long as i can remember i had um i had completely given up all hope i didn't think that i thought i thought i would die on on the street and if it wasn't for carrie stepping in and actually being part of um being in being there for my intervention I, I i i don't know that i would be here today it's um it's uh it's heavy it's, it's a lot to deal with but i'm i i knew about na i knew about rehab but i didn't ever think it was an option for me i, I didn't think that I, I i thought i would be one of those people like like so many of my friends who overdosed and died i've seen so many so many people die. You know, you're the you're the third caller in the row in a row that said that. Yeah. The yeah. two the two ladies before you lost their boyfriends and and daddy's um, the son's daddy to to drug abuse and now you're talking about it too. It's just terrible, isn't it? Well, uh, because because it's true. It happens. I mean, it it, it affects everyone. It affects you and everyone around you. And mm -hmm. it's uh, I I didn't want to be the next person on the list. Um, I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where to turn. And if it hadn't been if it hadn't been for you, Carrie, then I might not be able to make this phone call right now. Yeah. Um, because you you saved my life you you literally saved my life i mean i know it's only been six days but for the first time in almost 20 years i can actually see a future that does not involve me dying from an overdose wow you know i want to just I, I appreciate um the credit you're giving me but i'm, I'm going to i'm going to give i'm going to give that credit away you did this all i was there all i was was there I, all I did was offer you 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 accepted the help you made the decision so I want you to do me a favor pick up your right arm okay put it above your head uh -huh. now pat yourself on the back okay you uh -huh. deserve the credit you did this and I remember um, there's a whole background to this deal but but the story you were telling me is you were surfing the web <laughs> Mm -hmm. And you, you answered an ad about something about intervention. Exactly. And you were high on, if I remember, ecstasy or something like that. Exactly. And um, what a, wow. How, wow. 
What a change, huh? Yeah, I was, um, I was, uh, I was high on a few things um, at the moment, and I found some link on the internet and happened to click on it and fill something out. It was about, um, it was about a TV show uh, similar to Intervention, mm -hmm. and I figured, why not? Why not try it? And um, luckily, people stepped in and, and they helped me. And if if I hadn't if I hadn't done that, if I had not filled that out and, and, and taken that step, then I I don't know that I would be here now. Mm -hmm. And actually, the intervention was not just on you; it was on you and your husband. Exactly, who's also in treatment um, right. at another facility. And we we had talked um, a lot before about getting help and and going into some kind of treatment somewhere but honestly when you spent when you spent as much time as we did doing nothing but drinking and doing drugs non-stop making that step we, we didn't know how to do it we didn't know what to do our lives the only thing we knew how to do was drink and get high we could find drugs all day long but we just we couldn't find the help that we needed yeah um, it's hard to even know where to even start Exactly, exactly. So let me ask you something. 19 years of using hardcore drugs. Exactly, yeah. Six days of being sober. What's it like? Uh, it, it, it's mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing because um, I'm feeling and thinking things now that I, I, I wish I was feeling and thinking for the, for the past 19 years. But I'm, I'm, I'm happy that it's, it's all coming back. I'm finally starting to feel like a person again. I haven't felt like a person in, in so long. Yeah. And um, everyone here, the staff here, everyone that I've met has been so great and so helpful, and everyone's so understanding. Um, it, it, it's really been it's really been a blessing. Very very cool. And the the show is called Codependency. It'll air on um, TLC. Uh, Christina is the interventionist and I was supportive interventionist on that show so you don't want to miss that so keep your eyes open for codependency and you'll see more of Daniel hey Daniel you know what you're, you're, you're the reason why we do this stuff well thank you you, you really are so, thank you I'm, I'm so appreciative of it Yeah. anything you want to say to anybody out there my friend well <laughs> there's so many people there's so many people that I, I I, I'm just glad that, that not everyone gave up on me because I was lucky enough to still have one person in my life, my husband, who, right. who never gave up on me. And you guys got to know that these guys, um, you and your husband, I mean, you travel with 40 states? 44, yeah. So, so these guys been states. running for, for years. Yep, yep, that is true. Very, very good. So, hey, I, I'm really, really proud of you. I'm going to come see you this week, and, and I love you lots, and you just keep on going, my buddy. Hey, I'm going to. I'm I know you are. Determined. I have huge faith in you and your husband. So, hey, thanks for calling, and happy holidays, and I'll see you soon. You too. All right, see you soon, Gary. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and take a break first? Okay, guys, I know we have Mark on the phone and, um, and, he's, and whoever else, so don't hang up. We're going to take a two-minute break, and we'll be right back with Families in Action on your hometown station, AM. 1220 KHTS. Welcome back to Families in Action on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. I'm Carrie. I'm here with Jerry Bruce, and we're talking about, hey, gratitude, huh? Lots of gratitude on the and, phones today. You know, I just, just hung up with Stephanie, and, and, and she might be calling in, she might not, because we're on a roll, but, but what a heavy show. Absolutely. I mean, it's so much, if you listen to the show, there's so much to be grateful for, but we also heard a lot of tragedy and overcoming tragedy and i just i hear not just gratitude but i hear the hope in all their voices yeah you know that they're they're gonna keep doing this and continue to progress and continue to get healthier you know and hopefully reach out and help other people too and express their gratitude you know through you know their actions with other people yeah and you know what for the people who called in alcohol and drugs make good people do bad things turn good dreams into nightmares and when people start getting sober, they start saying, well, I'm really not that bad of a person. And they start really liking. And then you start, when you start liking yourself, you get hope. And then when you have hope and you got self-esteem and you care about yourself, you don't want to blow it. So just hang in there. And people used to tell me, hey, hang in there. Don't, don't leave five minutes before the miracle. I'm like, I don't believe in miracles. I had a hard time with any of that. But the, the miracle was I woke up one day and felt good. 
There's a little good in the worst of us and a little bad in the best of us. You know? And that's the way it is. So what do you think? We have another caller. Should we bring Mark on? Yep. Let's grab Mark. I'll let you bring Mark on. Hello, Mark. Hello, Welcome here on KHCS going? with Jerry and Carrie. Hey, Jerry and Carrie. Hey, Mark. How are you guys doing? We're doing, we're good. doing? we're doing good. I mean, how can you how can you not do good after all the after what we just heard? Oh man, it's amazing. It really is. Everyone's saying really good stuff. Yeah. I hope I could compete with that. Well, you know what? You just I mean, just do your thing and tell us what's going on and what you're grateful for, and uh, I'm sure you'll do fine. Oh well, thanks guys. Yeah. Um. You know what? I'll kind of start off with my story first. Um, I liked how you guys said, you know, drugs and alcohol make good people do bad things. Yep. And, oh, man, the, I just really started messing up my life, especially when I started doing heroin. Um, I started stealing from my parents. I started stealing from stores. I started selling my, per, you know, merchandise, pawning everything. I lost everything. I sold my car. And I really just kept digging myself a deeper, deeper hole. And uh, I really made myself believe that I was a really horrible person, you know? Right. And, uh, you know, so then I came into the action the first time. And I was still, what was really hard for me was to see the light at the end of this dark tunnel. Because I, I still felt like a horrible person. And the light and the light felt like the train coming, didn't it? Yes, yeah. exactly, you know? And, um, you know, it's a... Uh, that kind of messed me up because I got out of the rehab the first time and I ended up relapsing as soon as I got out because I wasn't content with myself. I wasn't content with life. I couldn't see the happiness of being sober. Right. You know, because I was so down. I was so down on myself, you know. And uh, this time around, oh my gosh, I can't explain the turnaround, dude. It's so amazing. I feel so great. I have self-respect. You know, I'm loving. I'm, oh man, I, it's just all these feelings. And like how this girl said too, it's real feelings. It's not fake feelings how drugs give us. Mm -hmm. We're able to experience all these real feelings. And honestly, like two weeks ago, you know, I started to actually tear up and everything. And I can't remember the last time I cried over anything. And now it seems like the littlest things, either happy or sad, mainly happy ones, you know, it just brings joy and tears to my eyes, you know? Yeah. It's an amazing feeling. Well, you know, and it's that time of year right now where where it's uh, it can be emotional. And we become vulnerable and then we want to be intimate with people that we care about, and especially ourselves. Exactly. So we, we get in touch with a lot of different feelings that we've never had before. And what what we do at, at in, in action in our residentials and our outpatients is, and I hate to say is we teach people how to feel. Because yeah. when people start using drugs, they stop feeling. Exactly. They, they use drugs to be happy. They use drugs when they're mad. They use drugs when they're sad. And yep. all of a sudden, we get sober, and those feelings come, and people don't have a clue on how to deal with them. Well, sometimes it can be overwhelming. Oh, and yeah. you know, trying to get them to just acknowledge one feeling at a time. You know, angry, clean time. Sad, clean time. Mad, clean time. You know. That's all still clean time. You know, that's yeah. what they have to grasp. So what you're saying is perfect. I mean, you're right. You, you know, you, you got out of rehab. You, you, you think about all that stuff you've done and what a terrible person I am. So you have to go out and use again. Yep. And you go back and you get clean. And all of a sudden it's like, wait, I'm not that bad of a person. It was the drugs. Seriously, yeah. And if you can get mad at the culprit, the drugs, you could forgive yourself. Exactly, and that's how that's where I'm at today. And let me tell you a secret: the best way to be able to forgive yourself is to quit doing the behavior that makes you feel bad. Exactly. And once it gets from your head to your heart, and you know, hey, I'm done, you're gonna feel a lot better about yourself. It oh, sounds yeah. like you've done that, huh? Yes. Oh yeah, yes I have, and that's the greatest thing because it's you know the main thing is having that respect for yourself. Yeah. Because if you have that respect for yourself, and even if you have a craving or whatever, which I haven't had in a while, and it, that's, uh, I can't, you know, right. the first time, I can't imagine myself saying that, you know. Yeah. But uh, how, much, the, how much time sober do you have, Mark? Oh, right now I got 21 days. <laughs> All right. 21 days. I'm almost on that 30 day, but, you know, I'm going to be going a long time right uh, now. I can I can feel it in your voice. I can oh. hear it in your in your tone. Hey, anything you want to say, I got to let you go because yeah, we got yeah. about one more minute left and we have to get off the air yeah awesome you know uh, just kind of 
saying um, to everyone out there that's struggling, you know, it's, it's all, you got to have some hope. There's a lot of hope out there, and uh, it took me a while to get there, but it will happen, you know. Don't think that you're doing something wrong or, you know, you just can't get through it because everyone can get through this. It's a hard struggle, but there is a light at the end of this tunnel, and once you hit it, it will make you feel honestly amazing better than any drug will ever make you guys feel and that's a fact thank you mark you and you you were wonderful and you ended it perfectly so thanks again good luck have a great holiday mark awesome thanks carrie and um, later jerry yeah, yeah, later, mark. hey what a great show jerry excellent yeah. it's just yeah yeah it just warms you up huh and you know what it is the holidays and, and instead of getting stuck into the stress and all those expectations reach out let people know that you love them that you love them let your friends know that they're important to you until next week happy thanksgiving and this is families in action on your hometown station am 1220 khts